In this video, we're going to use MATLAB to set up a lithium-ion battery undergoing constant current discharge. The first step is to open MATLAB and then go to New, Simulink Model. Click Blank Model, maximize the window, and then click on Library Browser. Within the Library Browser, you'll see the Simulink and Simscape toolbox. Expand the Electrical and Specialized Power Systems menus. Click on Fundamental Blocks and drag the Power GUI component onto your model. This component is needed for any model that's going to use the Specialized Power System Library. Next, we go to Electric Drives, Extra Sources. Under that menu, you'll find the battery component. This is the generic battery component. Drag it onto your model. Double click. And within this dialog box, you'll be able to select the type of battery under the parameters tab lead acid, lithium ion, nickel cadmium, or nickel metal hydride. We're going to select lithium ion. You have the option to enable temperature and aging effects. We're going to leave those unchecked. Change the nominal voltage to 3.6 and the rated capacity to 2.5. The initial state of charge we'll leave as 100, meaning fully charged at the beginning of the simulation. A state of charge of zero would correspond to fully discharged. Battery response time will leave as the default 30 seconds. Under the discharge tab, you have the option to input some additional battery parameters. If you have data from a spec sheet, for example, you could fit the battery model to match that spec sheet. In our case, we're going to leave this box checked where these additional parameters are determined from the nominal parameters of the battery, which we put in on this tab. So I'm going to click Apply. The parameters are now updated for our, for our nominal parameters. And next, we can display the voltage discharge curves at different current values. So we'll try 1.25 amps. 2.5 and 5 amps. And we can plot the discharge curves as a function of time or the discharge capacity in ampere hours. We'll do time first, click apply and then plot. And you can see on the bottom pane here we've got the different discharge curves at 1.25, 2.5 and 5 amps. So as we discharge the battery at a higher current the battery discharges quicker. The voltage is reduced to the cutoff voltage at a shorter time. The pane in the top shows the nominal discharge curve and the yellow and gray areas have to do with the fitting process. We're not going to consider that in this video but as we change the different parameters on the discharge tab these different areas, the yellow and the gray areas, will change and the shape of the discharge curves will change. What we're concerned with in this video is these three different discharge curves at the three different currents. If we plot them against ampere hour, you notice that at the three different discharge rates, the extracted capacity is pretty similar. There's not much effect of discharge current on the discharge capacity. Go ahead and close those windows. A shortcut to zoom in to your model is to click spacebar. Now we've zoomed in to the two components that we have. I can move the battery model around. What I'm going to do next is set up a circuit which will discharge this battery at a constant current. So we need to go back to the library browser which you can do by simply clicking the icon again and it brings the library to the front. We need to find the constant current source. So if you go to specialized power systems under fundamental blocks, electrical sources, we can find a controlled current source. Drag that onto your model. And we're going to make a connection. 
the positive terminal of the battery to the positive port of the constant current controlled current block and the negative to the negative. You make the connection by highlighting or hovering over the negative port, clicking and dragging, and then releasing the mouse when you've made the connection. You can flip the orientation of the block by highlighting it and then hitting Control i So that puts the S port on the outside, which makes it a little bit easier to access. So this S port is a signal that we need to provide, which tells the battery model how much current we're either charging or discharging from the battery. Back to our library browser, we're going to go to the Simulink menu under Commonly Used Blocks. I'm going to use the constant constant block. I'm going to flip it with control I and I'm going to connect the constant block to the signal S port. I'm going to specify the current which will be negative 2.5. So the, the magnitude of current is 2.5 and the sign indicates whether it's charge or discharge. If the sign was positive we would be providing current from the negative to the positive terminal. Current would be going into the positive terminal of the battery, charging it. In this case, we have a negative sign, meaning the current will be flowing from positive to negative. What we need to do next is connect to our the port M on the battery. This is basically the output data of, of the battery model. To do that, go back to the library browser and click bus selector and drag it into the model. I'm going to bring it up, I'm going to flip it, and I'm going to connect, I'm going to make the connection. There's a shortcut where if you see an arrow that's grayed out, you can hover over that arrow and click, and it automatically makes the connection. Now, if we double click on the bus selector, we can see the signals that are present from the port M. So port M is outputting the state of charge of the battery in percentage, the current, and the voltage. So we're going to select all three, do one at a time, SOC, current, and voltage, and I'm going to remove my two signals which have the question marks, and click apply and OK. And you'll notice that we now have three output outputs on our bus selector. Next, I'm going to select Scope from the Simulink Commonly Used Blocks menu. I'm going to flip it and make the connection. So this first scope will show us the state of charge of the battery. I'm going to copy that scope, which I can do quickly by right-clicking and dragging. Make the connection, and now I have current, and I'll do that one more time for the battery terminal voltage. So each of these scopes will now display these three different signals as a function of time as our simulation is running. Before we run the model, I'm going to change the simulation time to be 3600 seconds for one hour. Now we're ready to run the model. Click the Run button. The model compiles and runs pretty quickly. And if we double click on our voltage scope, it takes a minute to bring up, we can see the terminal voltage as a function of time. It starts out around 4.2 volts and discharges to just above 2 volts over that one hour period. We can look at the current, which is actually positive 2.5. The sign convention within the battery model is the opposite of the sign convention for, our, for how we interface with the battery. So this is showing a 2.5 amp discharge. And finally, we'll show the state of charge from 100 down to right around zero. So you've now set up a lithium ion battery model using MATLAB and the Simulink and Simscape toolboxes. To dis and, um, and that model is discharging at a constant current of 2.5 amps.